two top 10 teams head to Madison this weekend, one in football, one in basketball. Which one of the Badgers win and which one means more? Plus, betting locks of the week. Welcome to the Bucky Report, your destination for all things Wisconsin Badgers. Authentic takes. Oh, my God. Game analysis. Touchdown, Badgers. Ring one up. And discussion from the fan perspective. Woo-hoo! Thanks for joining us and on Wisconsin. Welcome to the Bucky Report. I'm your host, Rajiv, back with you for another quick hit game preview and prediction show. We got two huge games to talk about this week. Uh, we are at the Bucky Report on Twitter, YouTube, and wherever you can find your podcast. If you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button so you know when we make new content. Um, I'm flying solo tonight. Um, we Justin and I could not get our calendar synced up, and it's way too late for him right now. He is asleep, surely. It's, uh, we're recording this on Thursday night um, in advance of tomorrow's big game against Arizona and Saturday's against Oregon. So, uh, sorry, Justin can't be with us. He just got me today. Um, and we'll be back on Sunday though. Of course, uh, when our regular time slot, our new time slot, actually 5 PM central time will for our Sunday live show, hopefully, hopefully talking about two good games. Um, Unlikely that we're going to be talking about two wins. We're going to get into that today. We're going to talk about the Oregon game. We're going to talk about um, um, Arizona. And then, of course, uh, something new, right? Uh, some locks of the week, some betting picks of the week. I've been doing them on Twitter um, for the, for most of the season. I haven't done the last past few weeks. Uh, but I've got some good locks that I want to talk about today on the show. Um, here's the thing. So we've got number one Oregon heading to Madison this week. I really wish, first and foremost, that I was more excited about this game. And I'm wondering how Badger Land is feeling out there. I, I just feel like before the Penn State game, another top five team, we played three. This is going to be our third one um, at home this year. Before the Penn State game, there was a lot of excitement, right? We had we had gotten the three wins before. We were on a bit of a hot streak. We were thinking we could get this done. Could this be the big win? Well, now we have the number one team coming in, into the into the Camp Randall Stadium, and we should be more excited about it, right? Like this should be the game that everyone's pumped about all year. But instead, that's that's kind of what happens when you lose to Iowa the week before. Instead, you have the number one team coming in. You are excited about it, but there's just not the passion within the fan base that we know we're used to seeing. And I get that. The last time we stepped on the field, we got rocked by Iowa, 42 to 10. A game that we talked about on, you know, reaction shows. We talked about it on our shows. It's just, it's a kick in the nuts. That's just all there is to it. And that's why you're not seeing some of that, that top level excitement. Um, and it's a huge week. We got recruits. The, the list of recruits that are coming this week, um, including Carter Smith, who we were hoping to land. And now there's a lot of prognosticators saying he's going to Florida state, which stinks, but uh, the quarterback out of Florida, but there's a lot, there's a lot of recruits and you don't get a chance like this very often to play the number one team in the country. So uh, there's a lot to look forward to, but also a lot of nervousness. So let's get into the game a little bit. Uh, we're not going to do our traditional three big things because without Justin, it just doesn't feel right. So we're just going to give a little preview um, about the game in general. And of course our score predictions. Now I do have Justin score predictions. So I'll throw those up um, at the end of the show here when we, when we get to that offensively, look, I think for, from, from an Oregon perspective, let's, let's just call it what it is. Dylan Gabriel is one of the best quarterbacks in the, in, in, the, in college football. He's certainly a Heisman, hopeful Heisman candidate, Heisman favorite, however you want to say it. He's got nearly 2,900 yards, 22 touchdowns, five interceptions. Um, this is his sixth year playing college football and he's been great the entire time. He had a season ending injury at uh, UCF. Now there was a COVID year, of course, and then he got injured one year, um, at UCF season ending injury, all those other years that he didn't have a season ending injury. I mean, he pretty much threw for 3,500 yards every single year. There was one year he threw it for 31. He already has 2,900 and he's definitely looks like he's going to throw for 3,500 yards. He's averaging 8.9 yards per attempt. Not only this year, but his over his entire career. I mean, he's he's an amazing athlete. He has thrown so many interceptions, so many touchdowns, so few interceptions. Um, obviously, dual threat quarterback who can do a lot of damage to us. And if, looking back at our history against dual threat quarterbacks, it's not the greatest. 
this will be the best team we've played all year. This will be the best quarterback we've played all year. These will be the best receivers we've played all year. There's really not, I mean, obviously Alabama, you can, you can compare to these guys pretty, pretty heavily. Um, and it's just going to be a grind. They've got incredible receivers. Um, you know, Tez Johnson, I think he has eight touchdowns already. Evan Stewart, Treshawn Holden. They've got weapons for days. And the only thing we can really try to do is to keep Dylan Gabriel in check. Um, whether that's spying him, whether that's, you know, trying to obviously maintain um, gap discipline, maintain, you know, to keep setting the edge. We've got to keep him from destroying us on third downs. And whenever he can't find one of his top wide receivers, he's going to try to escape the pocket and he's going to be really good at it. So we're going to have to keep him um, contained. Now, there's no good way of doing that. Um, if we're being totally honest here, in order for Wisconsin to have a chance in this game, they've got to play the best game they've played all year long. And it can't be close. We played a top five team and got B42 to 10. We played another top five team who, if you look at the roster and the team, it, they, Penn State's not as good as Alabama and Oregon, in my opinion. Um, you know, Drew Aller obviously got hurt in that game. But obviously, the, the backup Pribula did really well. And But even before he got hurt, Allard didn't have the greatest game. It was He was fine. He just didn't really crush us. That's because I don't think he's he's not on that level. Um, maybe he's a better peer quarterback than Milrow, but he's not on Dylan Gabriel's level. No one in this conference is um, short of Ohio State. Like That's pretty much all it is. It's, it's Oregon, Ohio State, and everybody else. I know there's talk about Indiana and all that stuff. Don't get me started on that. Indiana... Look, they deserve to be where they are, and that's fine. But they, if, if we had played Indiana schedule, it'd be a, we'd, we'd have a much, much better record. So that's a, that's a separate discussion. Um, but, you know, we, we're, it's going to be very difficult to stop this team. Very, very difficult. So we, we know they're going to score points. Um, we've always been a bit of a bend, but don't break defense. That doesn't really work when the team you're playing up against is going to, is breaks everyone. Right. I mean, even they put up 32 points against Ohio state, like they're, they're a team that's going to score points. They, if you look at all the points they've scored, even the teams like against when they played, um, you know, whether it's Purdue or Maryland, like they, they, you could have, scored more in some of those games, they've taken their foot off the gas in several um, of the of the contests that they've had. On the other side of the ball, look, you guys know I'm a Colts fan. And back in the day when we had Peyton Manning, back in our glory days, everyone who tried to play us, the, 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 their game plan was always the same. Slow the ball, slow the game down, keep the ball out of Peyton Manning's hands. That's really the only way we can do this. We've got to limit Dylan Gabriel's possessions because they're just going to take advantage every single time. So there's a couple ways you do that. First of all, uh, establish the run, of course, which we know we hope to be able to do uh, with Walker um, and Dupree and hopefully Iacomelli. I mean, can we get this guy some carries? That would be nice. So that's going to be something that we're going to have to do. It's not something that I think we're going to be able to do, but we have to do that in order to win this game. We have to establish the run. And of course, the other big thing we can't do is turn the ball over. They will destroy us. You all remember the pass against Penn State, that pass that really took that game from looking like it could be, would be a win to a game that you just kind of knew we were done with. And Braden Locke has shown that he's turned the ball over quite a bit. Um, the pass rush for Oregon, they're going to get home. They're going to get home. Um, Mateo, um, I can't, I, this, his name is so hard to say. Um, Uyungalele, I think that's how it is. Uyungalele. Um, and, and, um, and Jordan Birch, they've, they've combined for 11 and a half sacks. So he's going to be under pressure. Can he hold on to the ball? Can he not drop the ball and, and drop it in the pocket? Scoop and scores can happen. Things like that. If we're going to be in this game, we've got to establish the run. We've got to not turn the ball over. We can't lose the turnover margin. And it's likely that we're going to. That's why you don't see a lot of Badger fans picking the win. Um, but it's it's unlikely that's going to happen because we've seen Braden Locke put the ball on the ground, put the ball into harm's way. It's not his best attribute. It's protecting the ball. So that's going to be a problematic. But that's what has to happen if we're going to win. I'm very much hoping that Walker and Dupree can get going. They, Oregon, this is, there isn't really a weak point. I think they're in the 30s, low 30s um, for run defense in the country. That's the worst part of their team. And it's still really good. If we had that, we'd be super happy about it. So can we be productive offensively? And can we find a way to stop them? 
That's obviously the biggest question. And the, the reality of the situation is Badger fans aren't really that pumped about it. They're not really, they're not, there's no one, no one's out there picking a Badger win. Um, there, I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit in a few minutes about the, the gambling side of this, which I think is very, very interesting. But it's it's unlikely that this is really going to be moving in that direction. Uh, but there, there are, there's, it's college football. The one thing that you can look at across college football this year, results have been pretty crazy. I mean, there's been major upsets in games that you would never expect it. There's a 10 and 0 Indiana team. There's teams that like USC has fallen off the face of the planet. Like there's so many things that have happened that don't really make sense. So can it happen? Absolutely. Am I going to pick it? Absolutely not. I just don't see that happening. Um, I would love to be able to, to pick it, but I just doesn't, it doesn't just doesn't really feel like it can happen. Justin's uh, score is 34 to 10, 34 to 10, Oregon. Um, I think it's a bit closer. Uh, I do think it's a bit closer, and I'll tell you why. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this up again in the betting portion at the very end of the show, uh, but I'm going to try to chapter this show too so you can kind of go through that and look at those. The line on this game is very, very weird and fishy to me. If you would have asked myself, Ryan, Justin, any Badger fans before they saw the line, what the line was going to be, the answer probably is in the low 20s, 21, 22, 24, 25, something like that. No one thought this line was 14. That is a very interesting statistic. That's very It leads to interesting statistics because if you look at a place like Action Network, a betting site that will tell you how the money is flowing, it's by far, by a large margin, the, the widest sort of margin of bets of any game this week. 97% of bets are going on Oregon. 93% of the money is going on Oregon. All I have to say is Vegas was not built with 99% of people, 97% of people winning their money. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but to me, this line is just baiting people to take Oregon. I mean, they're the number one team in the country traveling to Madison. Yes, a difficult place to play, but a place that you know, we, for Alabama came in there and dominated. Penn State came there and won by two scores. Um, and obviously, with last week's debacle at Iowa, it is shocking to me that the line's not more. So, therefore, if you would have asked me what my score would have been before the line came out, I would have said they're probably going to win by 20 points. But with the line being what it is, and just showing me that Vegas is almost baiting you to take it. I have to go the other way. So I actually think the score is 31-20 Oregon. 31 was Oregon, Wisconsin 20. I can see a late cover type of situation that happens. Um, I wish I could pick a win, but I just can't. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, the other massive game that's coming up is actually Friday night at the Kohl Center. The University of Arizona Wildcats, a team that we know very much about as far as History with Wisconsin being the 2014, 2015 Final Four teams played Arizona. Um, and I, got, I was lucky enough to be at both of those games uh, to get to the Final Four. And last year we went there and got smoked, absolutely got rolled. I think it was 98 73 last year at Arizona, um, which is obviously not the result you want to see. It's an early season opportunity um, for this team. And we, we've we learned enough. We've learned some about this team in three weeks, in three games, I should say. Uh, Justin and I did our season prediction show over the weekend. And I, I definitely I predicted the fact that like we would probably have two or three losses in the non-con. This probably looks like it, it could be one of them. But John Tanjay has certainly exceeded my initial expectations for him. I thought he was going to certainly be an important part of this team, but he's been great. He's been fantastic. Um, and Nolan Winter looks like he did take a jump. And I think Nolan Winter is really the key uh, to this game. Arizona has an interesting front court of a 6'8 guy, a 6'6 six, six guy, uh, Townsend, and I'm drawing the other, a blank on the other guy's name now. Um, but they have some reserves. They've got a seven-footer and a seven-two guy that play quite a bit of minutes. Uh, Kiravas um, and um, something else. I should have had the thing up, but I, I don't have it up right now. Um, so there's there's length on that team. But I think Nolan Winter at the four, uh, being six eleven at the four, is an advantage that we can take. We can hopefully take. He is athletic. He can step out to the three. I've said it multiple times now that when you have a team where everyone every one of the starting five for the badgers can shoot the three and will shoot the three and that's a big advantage we we have we've we haven't had that for a while with tyler wall 
being in there because he just wouldn't do that. It's an advantage now. Now, when Carter Gilmore's in the game, you still know that he's not doing that. However, he has shot them this year. That's a big advantage that I hope we can exploit. Um, it's going to be difficult. We have to win the glass. We've, we have to protect the ball. It's going to be a very difficult game. This team is real. This team is good. But we are honoring the 2014-2015 teams tomorrow, which is super exciting. Um, it's it's going to be a stripe out in the Cole Center. You've got the number nine team coming. And it's going to be exciting. And I think... There's got to be something to that. There, we've got to be able to feed off that energy. This is a very good team, and I don't really know if Wisconsin basketball is great. There's, we've had predictions where we've said, "Oh, I, they're going to be, they're going to have a great year." And there's predictions where, "Oh, there's, they're, they're going to be down. They're not going to make the tournament." Like Justin doesn't think they're going to make the tournament. There's a lot of varying degrees of prediction out there. This is a measuring stick for us. We've played three teams that we absolutely should have beaten, and we have. Uh, there's some signs of life. There's some signs of concern. You're playing one of the top teams in America and you got to leave it all out on the floor. And I think that's the message here. Um, that I, I So look, I'm going to pick a win. I'm just telling you right now, I'm going to pick a win in this game because I believe in what this team can do. I think John Tanja has been a huge surprise, not big surprise, but just the production level has been quite high. The bench is obviously concerned. We don't really know. McGee's getting a lot of minutes. Um, Amos is getting some, um, you know, Gilmore, Janicki. There's a lot of people that are playing. What the exact rotation is going to be is going to be difficult to have. Um, Justin is picking a 77 64 Arizona win. I'm going 71 68 Badgers. I think it's going to be a very close game. I think the fact that we're at the Cole Center, it's, it's an, it's, a big weekend for Wisconsin sports. And I just think that that energy is really going to be there now. That doesn't translate onto the floor. I get that. But the energy in the Cole Center is real. And this is Arizona's first test, just like it's ours. Anything can happen in a basketball game. Anything at all. I think what's really interesting is, you know, there's a lot of questions on Twitter about like, you know, if you could only have one of these games, would you want it to be the Oregon game or the Arizona game? And I think the the, the majority of the, que- the answers are, we'll take the Oregon game. They're number one team in the country. And I, I asked this question of Ryan and Justin earlier, and Ryan um, said, take, it's, it's Oregon and it's not close. I thought about it a lot today. And while I would say that I would answer yes, Oregon, I don't think it's not close. I actually think that it's an interesting discussion because like, if we beat Oregon on Saturday, it's going to be great. We, it's a game like 2010. We beat the number one team in the country. People are going to talk about it for a long time. But it doesn't change the fact that we got rocked 42 to 10. Just like the Penn State game a few weeks ago had all that energy and hype and the ability to really take off with the season and we were all excited. It's because what we did leading up to it that made it exciting. And by having that be our loss the last time we, we played football, I'm not saying I'm not going to go crazy if we win. It's going to be amazing if we if we win this game. But... I think the sting is kind of already out of the season because of some of the results we've seen and because of the play that we've seen and the plus the lack of the offensive creativity that we've seen and and people calling for Longo to be out and Dressel to be out or whatever people people's opinions are on Fickle or anybody that that sort of that shine of the season has come off and I feel like yeah that's why I obviously want to win this game but I think the basketball side of it is interesting because it's early season. It's a top team. You can establish hope and establish some trajectory for the year by winning this game. So, of course, I'd rather have the Oregon game. I think that's more important for the long-term health of the football program. Luke Fickle's tenure, he's desperate for a signature win. That's super important. Um, but I think the discussion is interesting, and I don't. I wouldn't say it's not close. I think it is kind of close between which one I really want more, um, and which one is more important. Because, you know, there, there's this, the, the the football season has been for the most part. Let's be honest, it's been a disappointment. Um, now our record could be great. We could win this game. We could win out, and all of a sudden we finish uh, with eight wins, we're eight and four. That's great. We're going to a good bowl game. There's so much hype, but I think there's a little bit more hope in the basketball season because it's a brand new season. And that's just really where it is. So uh, Justin is 7764. I'm 7168 Badgers. He's got Oregon winning that game. Um, I want to do a quick new segment with you. Hopefully we'll do these a little more on our preview shows. Just some betting picks. Um, you know, I live in Las Vegas. I love sports gambling. I'm 16, 11, and one on the year. Um, I do all my books on Twitter. Haven't done it for a few weeks. Haven't made picks in a few weeks, but 
back at it. And all these picks are in the Big Ten. I've already told you one of them. Oregon at Wisconsin. I'm picking the Badgers. Look, I, I really don't. If you would have asked me before this line came out, I do not think it would have been uh, under 14. But the line is super fishy. 97% of the money is going on Oregon. When that happens, a lot of the time, just bet the other way and you win. And all those 97% people lose. That happens a lot. Could definitely see a backdoor cover here. Uh, Badgers take the points. Next one in the conference is USC. Look, USC is a really interesting team to me. Um, they, they're obviously they're two and five in conference. Welcome to the Big Ten. They've been b- punched in the mouth several times. Lincoln Riley probably not leaving at the end of this year because he's got quite the buyout from what I've read. Uh, but I think he's still coaching for his job. Um, USC is not a program that when they enter a conference, they they feel like they're gonna they're gonna drop all these games and be okay with it. You got a guy, Kurt Signetti, that's gonna be highly coveted from Indiana to be the coach of wherever he goes next. And a USC could come calling. Who knows? A lot of people are gonna come calling on Signetti. But I think USC's backs are up against the wall. Their fans are it's a home game, their fans are upset, they're pissed off, and rightfully so. They're two and five in the Big Ten. Boy, and I was at that game. Those fans were talking a lot of shit, and I really wish I was talking to them now. Um, so I think USC gets this done. Nebraska's in a bit of a tailspin. Um, they got a really good start to the season. I think Rayola's freshman isms are c- kind of coming out. Um, he's coming off a bit of an injury. I, Miller Moss got benched. They've got Mayava now in there, quarterback, the UNLV transfer for USC. I, I think USC is going to, to take this game. I don't like it. If, you, if you're getting this line at seven and a half, um, I don't love that. I, the hook is interesting to me, and I think it does kind of put it over the edge either way. But if you can get it at seven, which you can at certain places, uh, take USC at home, um, lay the points. Last one, also in the Big Ten, Rutgers, Maryland. I think Rutgers is, is a team that at the beginning of the season, everybody was talking about as, as, a, as a sort of like a dark horse Big Ten team. I picked, or before the season, I picked Wisconsin to lose to Rutgers. They've got a decent nucleus of players. They've got a head coach in Greg Shano that knows how to get it done. They have underperformed multiple weeks, and last week they got a win over Minnesota. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, I think they're going to ride that a little bit. Go to Maryland and cover this spread. I don't know that they win this game. I see, see being very close. Maryland puts up points. Um, Rutgers struggles with that, but their defense played really well against Minnesota. I absolutely think that this is, again, this is... A, on paper, Rutgers is a better team than Maryland. Um, based on their records, seeing who they've played, I, I think Rutgers is a better team. They've just underperformed pretty bad in, 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 in some games, and some of them have been really poor, but sometimes they've just got unlucky as well. Um, so I really see them kind of finishing this season strong um, and being a little bit closer in the end standings to where we expected them to be. So I'm going to take Rutgers uh, with the points um, at Maryland. That'll do it for today's show. We will be back on Sunday, 5 p.m. Central Time, live on YouTube um, to talk about the Oregon game, to talk about the Arizona game, to talk about all the recruits that were there. Justin will be back. Hopefully, we'll have maybe Ryan will jump on this week. Um, it'll be a good show, uh, but appreciate that. Again, if you're listening to this, still hit the like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. The subscribe button, all that good stuff. Um, it's a big week. Leave it all out on the field. Leave it all out on the court. You've got nothing to lose at this point. Hunter Wohler said it best. You have nothing to lose. Badgers, like no one expects the Badgers to beat Oregon. Leave it all out there, and hopefully we can get something done. And would love, absolutely love, to get the basketball season started off on the right foot. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. And as always, on Wisconsin. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Bucky Report or The Bucky Report Podcast from wherever you get your content. Until next time, on Wisconsin.